In August 2019, youth climate activist Greta Thunberg sailed across the Atlantic Ocean to raise awareness about reducing carbon emissions. Tens of thousands of students across the world were inspired by her weekly climate strikes in Sweden and organized their own climate strikes across hundreds of cities. On September 20th, hundreds of students rallied at the Capitol here in Hartford to show support for doing something to save our planet. We're at a turning point now, and we have a choice to make. Without immediate action, this could lead to the end of our civilization as we know it. Our children will face the consequences. These kids will inherit the world we leave them, and they're leading the way to a brighter future. I am not an expert on the environment, but I was able to reach out to some experts to put together a community forum on climate change. Tonight is just the beginning. Tonight is gonna to be the seeds that we're gonna to plant to really educate, and that's what tonight's about, to educate our community on environmental issues that's affecting our planet. Right now, extinctions are occurring at anywhere from at least 100 times to as much as 1,000 times faster than the normal rate. Fossil fuel-based energy, or burning fossil fuel to heat cool buildings, generate electricity, drive our cars, or any other way that we use fossil fuel, heating uh, food, um, taking a shower. There's lots of ways that we use these things that we really don't think about. Your tablet, your cell phone, your TV, your washer, your dryer, pretty much anything you do is using energy. And all of that is what's contributing to climate change. That's what's melting the polar caps, that's what's releasing the methane from the ocean. It's, it's all really caused by us using fossil fuels. We have 12 years to accomplish these goals. And for me, that was a really big wake-up call because now we're down to 11 years. So this summer, um, I got involved with helping plan the September 20th Hartford climate strike. And this strike um, brought 1,500 Connecticut residents uh, to the state capitol in Hartford to demand immediate and drastic action from our politicians. Well, if you don't like something, then do something about it. So I did. I am State Representative Bobby Gibson. I represent primarily Bloomfield and Windsor, but tonight, is a little bit different. Tonight, I'm representing the state of Connecticut and actually our planet. This isn't just a story about global climate change. This is also a story about Bloomfield and Windsor. I think the basis of our democratic process is local activity, local involvement. And I think it's important that citizens do get involved. Riverwater Connecticut really started from a small group of citizens in Bloomfield about a very specific issue, and then it grew to a statewide organization. And it wouldn't have done that unless there were people throughout the state who were willing to show up to lobby, were willing to write letters, who were willing to show for demonstrations. So it was really a grassroots um, movement. So we started meeting in each other's homes, about 12 of us. So we decided amongst ourselves to do a few things. One was to focus on the legislature and the creation of a group called Save Our Water Connecticut whose function was to follow through on providing legislation that would protect residents, businesses, and industry in times of drought. And this became the basis for the water plan. One of the more important bases, bases for the water plan was what happens if there's not enough water for everybody who gets it. We very quickly realized that the issues that we were confronting the gaps in terms of state regulation that really um, prevented us from having kind of an effective means to do anything was a statewide problem. And so we actually formed a side group called Save Our Water Connecticut, due in part to the involvement and interest of citizens throughout the area and ultimately across the state. This raises all sorts of environmental concerns and it brought out a lot of citizen activism which ultimately led to a real political revolution uh, in the town of Bloomfield. It also became clear that there were other major water policy issues the state was facing. We were in the midst of the 2016 
severe drought, which had a number of counties, including Hartford County, had to activate their drought plan. Southwestern Connecticut had to have emergency water supplies diverted to it. We realized that there wasn't yet even a complete inventory of the water resources of the state. There wasn't a plan as to how to allocate water, and it was necessary for the state to develop a water plan. We have great water supply in Connecticut. We are, this state is blessed with abundant sources of good, fresh, clean water. All too often, I think people think about economic development and the need of water in terms of supporting business. Obviously, it's really important from a public health perspective. People have a right to, to clean drinking water. Um, but the environmentalists were concerned in terms of um, in-stream uses of water, protection of aquifers, protection of stream flows, the fact that water is a system and anytime you're overextending use or being overly extractive, it has implications and ramifications that you might not even be aware of, and those things need to be balanced. It comes from our 1971 Environmental Protection Act that's already established as a Connecticut statute. Uh, Section 22A15, a declaration of policy, it is hereby found and declared that there is a public trust in the air, water, and other natural resources of the state of Connecticut, and that each person is entitled to the protection, preservation, and enhancement of the same. It's further found and declared it's in the public interest to provide all persons with an adequate remedy to protect the air, water, and other natural resources from unreasonable pollution, impairment, or destruction. You start to realize what kind of environmental damage that is occurring through the economic system that we've developed. If we don't protect the water supply, we're, we're all going to be drinking chemicals that we have no idea yet what, what effect they're going to have on our, our bodies, our kids' bodies, our agricultural products, etc. If the citizens don't care, those level of governments don't care. They'll do what they want to do. And that's at our peril. And one of my favorite quotes is uh, Terrence McKenna's great quote, uh, you either have a plan or you're part of someone else's plan. I believe if we all work together, a better world is possible. It's just so important to save the water, but also to save each other. You know, as human beings, to come together and kind of through all age differences, say, hey, let's fight for this. You know, incredible gift of an environment that we have, water being one of the most important resources in it. up here and when I come to the rallies it's wonderful to see the energy and the excitement because you guys have the real power because the power does not belong in, in me the power doesn't belong in the hands of my colleagues the power belongs 